Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada News Makers on the broadcast today. A story of intrigue in Beverly Hills with Josh Gross. He's the publisher of Beverly Hills Weekly. Here for the whole show on an all new Nevada News. Big R and Sparks is located on Bering Boulevard next to Smith's and across from Reed High School. It's a 50,000 square foot hardware store and a whole lot more. It's your spring headquarters with lawn and garden supplies, power equipment, and outdoor living. Big R on Bering Boulevard and Sparks next to Smith's and across from Reed High School. Big R. Hardware and a whole lot more. Carson Valley, hate your place for the good times. Carson Valley. The Nevada Builders Alliance has been protecting the interests of the construction industry for over 50 years. Our programs save members thousands of dollars every year and allow them to provide much needed benefits to their employees. Our industry also allows Nevada to grow. If you're thinking about a career in the construction industry, reach out. And if you haven't thought of a career in construction, what are you waiting for? We are the Nevada Builders Alliance. For 50 years, Nevada Heating has been keeping people comfortable in their homes. At Nevada Heating, call the Do It Right guys and get the air conditioning back on today. That's the Nevada Heating way. Why sweat for days on end when Nevada Heating can get your air conditioning fixed today? Call us today and we'll fix it today at 323-5585 or schedule us on our website at nevadaheating.com. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad on No Holds Barred Political Forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers Broadcast Headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're always pleased to welcome back to the program Josh Gross. He is the publisher of Beverly Hills Weekly. And we usually just check in with you to find out trends that are going on in Beverly Hills in terms of, uh, of, of retail uh, because of, of how that parallels with what's going on in Las Vegas. But you've got this huge story going on that is just crazy. And, and it's about the Cheval Blanc. And I want you to explain for people that are not familiar with this, who's behind it, what it is, and what the objections are. And then we'll go from there. Well, great to see you again, Sam. Uh, briefly, a luxury hotel project was proposed for Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills, which your viewers are familiar with, obviously. And it was a large luxury boutique hotel that arguably would have brought in significant tax revenue for Beverly Hills, but the voters narrowly defeated it. And among other reasons, they defeated it because while that project might be very popular in Reno and Vegas and elsewhere, uh, in Beverly Hills, the voters are very picky and uh, traffic, size, height, density, all major issues. So that's in part what led to its defeat. All right, and, and it was a nine-story building, and you're right, a nine-story building would almost be something you put in your backyard in Las Vegas. Um, right. the, the, the company that was putting this forward is owned by the wealthiest man in the world, correct? Correct. Bernard Arnault, and um, he's used to getting his way, but he didn't get his way in Beverly Hills. All right, so one of the things that struck me in the editorials that uh, you posted um, was that... Uh, that Mr. Arnault paid $465 million for 1.28 acres of land. Right. Okay, so when the Crystals Project on the Strip next to Bellagio was put in, that was $40 million an acre. This is so much more than that. How could you even possibly think that you were going to earn that money back from a, a nine-story hotel with a few hundred rooms? Well, first of all, Rodeo and Santa Monica Boulevard is one of the most famous intersections in the world. Uh, and it's basically the heart of the Golden Triangle, the Business Triangle of Beverly Hills. So the idea of having a luxury hotel there is obviously very appealing. And uh, it's a destination location. So uh, 
opponents of the project actually argued that because of the entitlement he was getting, uh, it would probably double or might even double that value. So that would bring us just a little south of one billion, Sam, with a B. So yes, it's a very, very uh, highly uh, coveted intersection in Beverly Hills. Okay, are there other pieces of land that are around there that are worth that kind of money? I haven't looked at the comps lately, but I can tell you Rodeo Drive has very limited inventory so that in the rare times that a parcel is for sale, and by the way, a lot of those properties have been family owned for many years, and obviously the value of Rodeo Drive has gone up over the years. So when those parcels do open up, they sell for top dollar, and there's no shortage of bidders in that area. Well, well, that's that's amazing that uh, just less than an acre and a half uh, would go up for that kind of money. That's that's just incredible. Um, there were lots of uh, okay. So so explain if you will, because you know we tend to think of you know people who don't live in Beverly Hills or Los Angeles tend to think it's like any other town, but a big town, of course, and the movie capital, etc. Um, but in fact. To me, what this showed me was that actually Beverly Hills is a very small town in terms of who the players are and how things get done. Am I right about that? Absolutely. And, I, you know, I've been covering Beverly Hills for close to 30 years now. One thing that you might not realize is there's a very strong slow growth, no growth movement in Beverly Hills, particularly amongst older residents, whose position is they move to Beverly Hills because they want a village. They want a small town. They want low rise. They want low density. They don't want the Las Vegas Strip on Rodeo Drive, okay? So anytime that a developer proposes something that's not to code, you know, that requires a variance and that is tall in this case, that would have obviously required a variance to build what they wanted to build, um, the voters aren't interested in that, even though there are many strong arguments about the money it's going to bring into the city to fund city services. Here we call it the TOT, Transient Occupancy Tax. I know you have something similar in Nevada. Uh, a large percentage of the voters are not interested in that argument. They tune it out, and their position is if it's not code conforming, we're not interested. Uh, well, that, that part in itself is, is quite fascinating. Um, y this cost you a lot of money for you to actually publish things that were against this project. Uh, you have a competitor paper in the area um, that took significant dollars, around $100,000, according to your guest editorial, uh, by a couple of council members. Um, and, and you did not share in any of that. Um, was that a tough decision for you to, uh, uh, to, to be a, a newspaper when you're the publisher and responsible for paying the bills? Not tough at all, Sam, because let me tell you something. We're all about independence. And uh, I'm reminded of a quote Catherine Graham, the legendary Washington Post uh, uh, publisher, told Woodward and Bernstein one time, which was it just briefly, you know, the Watergate uh, coverage was not good for business. And she went to the reporters and she said, you know, a number of advertisers are pulling out of our paper because they don't like this coverage. And then she added, good thing we can afford it. So I'm fortunate that uh, our paper is well established enough so that we didn't need their ads and we were able to cover what the people wanted to say regardless of any interference from any advertisers. Well, good for you on that. Uh, m did you ever have contact with Mr. Arnault or uh, top captains for him? Uh, I haven't talked to Mr. Arnault. Uh, one interesting angle, Sam, and I did have contact with is uh, this project hired a number of former Beverly Hills mayors to be lobbyists for the project. Right. And so obviously I know all of the former mayors of the last 40 years. And yes, I did talk to a couple of the former mayors, uh, but they were at best lobbyists for LVMH. They didn't necessarily have ability to override the L LVMH executives, all of whom, by the way, are from outside of Beverly Hills. So, you know, if we're really doing a postmortem of what they did right and what they did wrong, they badly assessed the interests and wants of Beverly Hills. That was not communicated effectively because, as I said, there were significant arguments in favor of the project, but a number of voters voted against. And also, if you if you factor in the spending imbalance, and by that I mean the yes side spent 10 to 1 with the no side spent, then it really wasn't all that close at all because, yes, it ended up being an 80-vote margin, but if you consider what the yes folks spent, it really was not a close election at all. 
How much do you think the total cost was? Upwards of three and a half million. Holy moly. And, 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 you know, and, that's, and, a, that's a tough pill to swallow, Sam. <laughs> yes. And, and how many voters are there in Beverly Hills? There's about 33,000 residents, 20,000 voters, and about 7,000 ballots were cast. So again, for a city election, that's about right. 30%, you know, more or less turnout. It, it wasn't a low turnout. It was just about what it normally is for, for a city election. All right. So do they currently own the land, LVMH? They do, and they now have two options. They can either sell the land and move on, or they can return to the council in a year with a new project, maybe scale it down, maybe offer a little more cash up front, maybe make a little more appealing deal. That would have to go through the planning process, planning commission, city council, and so on, but that is an option if they choose. All right, uh, do they have any other, because they have all these amazing brands that totally fit with what goes on in Beverly Hills, um, do they have any brand stores in Beverly Hills right now? Well, obviously LVMH is a brand well known in Beverly Hills. In terms of you know whether they plan to stay, go, we don't know yet. We don't we don't really know. All right, well, but I mean, as a brand, they're not going to leave just because of this deal going down. Because I'm sure they. I, mean, I would assume it. not, but again, I I don't know. Um, is there an appetite from people you have talked to behind the scenes um, to welcome them to come back with a project that? that fits in with the neighborhood? Or do you think that um, they're gonna wait it out and come back and, uh, and, and try this battle again? In my opinion, they should come back with a better deal. But I don't know, you know, they, they said, the, the head LVMH executive in his quote said, if the, the community doesn't want us, we're not interested. So I don't know that they've made a final decision yet. I mean, certainly the property has not been listed for sale yet. By the way, they would make their money back and then some on the resale because, again, Rodeo Drive has only become more valuable since they bought the property. But in terms of what they're going to do, I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see what happens. Uh, that That's truly amazing. And, of course, totally makes sense in, in this environment uh, that you have uh, Beverly Hills being such a, a wanted place in terms of real estate. Uh, but but just the, the do, it, it, do you know if that's one of the highest dollar values for an acre of land in the country? I, I think it is. I mean, I, I could only imagine maybe Manhattan would have something comparable, but I, I would guess it is. Yeah. Gosh, I, I mean, that, yeah, that that's true. I, I've just never seen a number like that. Like I said. Okay, well, hold on, but Sam, don't forget, uh, Beyonce and Jay-Z just bought a multi, multi-million dollar house in Malibu. So Malibu sometimes goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Beverly Hills, too. Um, how is business in Beverly Hills? Business is good. Uh, bouncing back after the pandemic. Obviously, the drop in European and Asian tourism, you know, hurt us for a while there. But it bounced back remarkably fast, I, I, I would say. Um, the challenge Rodeo Drive has right now that I hear from a number of retailers, Sam, is competition from other malls in the area. For example, we have the Rick Caruso, the Grove Mall. We have uh, Century City Mall was recently redone and has a number of luxury stores. So one thing the Rodeo Drive retailers keep warning the city council and the community is that we've got to keep pace with these other malls or we're going to lose out and not have the market share for luxury brands that we currently have. Uh, that would be a stunning turnaround of historic proportions. Um, are you seeing um, European and Asian travelers coming back at this point? Uh, because I know that uh, for Las Vegas, uh, we really haven't seen that those numbers grow significantly. And also, uh, we're also missing out uh, quite a bit of the convention business. We have some of the bigger conventions are back, but there's still a lot of room to grow, especially during midweek. How are you guys seeing it? We're almost back to pre-pandemic levels. And don't forget Dubai. Dubai is a huge uh, tourism issue for uh, you know people coming from Dubai who come here shop, shop and buy a lot of stuff on Rodeo Drive. Uh, and you know Saudi Arabia, Dubai, etc. So yeah, it's 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 back, but obviously there's always room for growth. You know that that's such an ironic situation because Dubai is the capital of the wildest buildings one has ever seen, and the amazing luxury that's there, the sales of Lamborghinis and Ferraris and all the rest of the luxury vehicles is through the roof, and yet they're still coming to uh, Rodeo Drive because that's still the area of prestige versus Dubai. Well, listen, we're fortunate for that. 
But see what I said earlier in the conversation, the Beverly Hills residents are not uh, persuaded that we need to do things beyond the code uh, to maintain this market share. So that's really one of the major takeaways from this election. Does it concern you though, especially you, you mentioned the competition from these other malls, and I've been to some of them and they are spectacular, um, that if you don't grow, that you will end up dying? That's the argument being advanced by some retailers and others. Um, you know, there's always been a little bit of a conflict between what the retailers want, and what the residents want. They're not necessarily the same. Um, it's a balance, obviously. But uh, the message from this election, in my opinion, Beverly Hills voters are still very strongly slow growth. And unless you make a very compelling argument, they're, they're not going to go for a big project like this. And the, the other part of this is that the residents are obviously very wealthy people. Right. All right. They, you know, just so your viewers know, Beverly Hills is a small town surrounded by Los Angeles, right? But the reason why people move to Beverly Hills is they want that smaller town. They want that village feel. They don't want uh, the Las Vegas Strip, quite frankly, right? You know, in, in their backyard. So that continues to be an issue. And uh, we'll see how that plays out in the years to come. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back. We're going to turn to politics after this time out. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you, but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. Safety is the number one priority for the trucking industry. Over $7 billion a year is spent on technology like this electronic eye that will apply the brakes automatically. But the most important factor for safety is the truck driver. These hardworking men and women who safely move over 70% of our nation's freight and 94% of Nevada's. We thank you because trucks move America forward. Remember 2010 in Northern Nevada, 13 to 14% unemployment, thousands of homes in foreclosure, Nevada's casinos closing? Families in the Reno Sparks area were hurting. Many were losing everything. Then Story County launched a game changer for our region, a public-private industrial partnership, streamlined permitting slash bureaucracy, attracting Fortune 500 companies that made Nevada their home. Story County generated a river of cash to area communities. Economic studies by the state and others for the Gigafactory consistently show positive economic benefits for our region. $4 billion in local wages, $17 billion in consumer spending and economic activity, over $100 million in taxes to Washoe, Story, Reno, Sparks, and Nevada, just for the Gigafactory alone. Story County, improving Northern Nevada one industry at a time. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we are pleased to continue our conversation with Josh Gross. He is a publisher of Beverly Hills Weekly. We check in with him from time to time. One of the areas that uh, you have expertise in because you have done hundreds, if not thousands, of interviews with politicians over the years. Um, I want to get your take on Dianne Feinstein and the situation here, because it seems as though um, even the Democrats would love to see her step down and move on. What, 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 what's your thoughts on this? Well, you know, it's a tragic situation because, first of all, Dianne Feinstein's had a hell of a career in California politics, and uh, she's one of the last that you're going to see, for example, She's a pro-death penalty Democrat, which you don't hear that anymore, right? And, you know, it's interesting. Her longtime colleague, Barbara Boxer, uh, made a public warning that she didn't think she should run again because of exactly what we're seeing now, this mental decline that's, you know, very unfortunate, and very painful to see in public. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what Newsom's going to do. Remember, Newsom made a pledge to appoint a Black woman to that seat. However... I don't think there's an appetite for another appointment. I think even if there is an appointment, it should be a caretaker who pledges not to run for that seat because it would be very unfair for the governor to do that given that he handpicked Alex Padilla, the other uh, 
uh, senator who you recall was recalled, who was uh, appointed rather when uh, Kamala Harris became vice president. So uh, I don't think there's an appetite for another gubernatorial uh, appointee who plans to run. Um, it is sad, though, when you think of where Dianne Feinstein came from, um, the terrible shooting in San Francisco City Hall um, right. and, uh, and, and what she survived through and then became such a lion in the Senate um, and did an outstanding job for uh, the country, I would say. Um, and, but then you look at Strom Thurmond, who was 100 and didn't know what day it was. Um, right. And so this is part of our Senate. I mean, I, I don't know. At some point, do we have to have a discussion about uh, age limits for the Senate or uh, mental acuity tests? I don't know. It, it's a tough issue. And look, you you might have uh, two presidential candidates from both parties who are north of 80 or almost north of 80, right? I mean, this is an issue in, in national politics, um, and we've seen it for some time. Uh, yes. All right. Let's take another break. We'll be right back. More politics from Southern California after this timeout. Pro Group Management is the place where companies can find workers' comp solutions that are designed to meet their specific business requirements. As regulations evolve, Pro Group takes a proactive approach to clear the path to make sure your business stays ahead of the curve. Knowing your workers' comp program is optimized, you can focus on other important matters related to your growing business. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over 1 in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Josh Gross. He is the publisher of Beverly Hills Weekly. Uh, we check in with him from time to time to see what's going on in Southern California. Uh, Gavin Newsom for president. Is that going to be a campaign? You know, well, let's back up. First of all, how viable is he on a national level? I don't know. Uh, I haven't seen any polling. Uh, he has managed to get elected uh, twice in a deep blue state. But does that uh, translate to the Midwest, to Wisconsin, to Michigan? I'm not so sure. Um, Kamala Harris, um, you know, one of the questions that comes up around Joe Biden is that if Joe Biden doesn't serve out this term or potentially another term, uh, she becomes the president. Is, is that a benefit or an anchor going forward, in your opinion? Well, again, you know, this is another San Francisco politician, you know, very left of center Democrat. Uh, does the nation have a, an appetite for that? I'm not so sure. But Sam, if we look at both parties, as we know, the nominees are increasingly from the fringes of both parties, right? So uh, nothing surprises me anymore. And uh, as for whether she would have the lock on the nomination, if Biden, let's say, suddenly decided he wasn't running, I don't know about that. I think you'd have a very contested primary. Uh, yes, and I agree with you on that. Um, what we're seeing here in Nevada is more people registering as independents or American independents because they don't realize that that is actually a party. Right, um, a very right wing party. Yes. Yeah, right. Um, are you seeing any kind of movement like that in LA? Well, with young people, yes. Young people, as you know, are increasingly not tied to either party. And that's kind of an interesting trend, obviously a big change over voting 40, 50 years ago. Uh, here, as you know, we have a top two system. I could argue the merits of that or the demerits of that. On the one hand, you know, the idea was you would get more moderate type candidates. I'm not sure we've really seen that though. What, what it ends up being is that candidates have to run two very expensive elections where they used to just have one. 
So there's something still to be said for the closed primary. Um, there's a TV show on Netflix called FUBAR that is starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. And it's fascinating to watch him back in his acting role, although obviously uh, aged quite a bit since his uh, action hero days, although he's still an action hero in this. But it just reminds me of, you know, out of a, a field of 50 candidates, that he became the governor of California and turned out to be a pretty darn good governor. Well, he, you know, sees the, the day at that point, there had just been a car tax, it was very unpopular. And the Democrat, Gray Davis, who you recall, who, you know, was also a fixture of California politics, had been in California politics for many, many years. He was on the wrong side of the voters. And sometimes a celebrity can capitalize on that. Now, the downside to it, Sam, is that celebrity politicians are not always all they're crafted out to be, because as we've seen, there's an art to politics and experience counts. And you can't just come in with a lot of catchy sound bites. You have to actually have to govern. And we see that's often much more difficult than people think. Uh, yes, but he was smart enough to hire Maryville Batcher uh, to be his chief of staff, and, and that was sure. a very smart move. Hey, we're out of time, my friend. Thank you so much. And, hey, great uh, to see you again, Sam. Yeah, and good luck to you for, for standing up to uh, this giant corporation and uh, st standing up and still standing. So thank you, sir. Thank you. And we'll be right back. Save money and take transit. Did you know you can ride the bus all day for less than what it would cost you for a gallon of gas? Plan your trip now by going to rtcwashoe.com. Imagine a magical garden that feeds Carson City's hungry and homeless, teaches our high school students agriculture, creates hanging floral displays to beautify downtown, and yet charges nothing. It's not magic. It's the Greenhouse Project. It's real. It's growing, and it needs your help. Go online to CarsonCityGreenhouse.org so together we can grow it forward. Hi, I'm Renee Summer, our digital news anchor here at 7 at 7. Watch our streaming nonstop newscast immediately with your mobile phone. 7 at 7 is the new way for you to get every bit of local news you need in just seven minutes. Breaking news, local neighborhood news, weather and sports are just a click away. Reporters bring you all of what's happening in the Valley. From Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, YouTube and more. Get every bit of local news you need from the RJ and LVRJ.com. Southwest Specialties has been making the homes and businesses of Nevada beautiful for more than 20 years. Their experienced designers and craftsmen create the walkways, backyards, water features, and a variety of outdoor cooking areas that add curb appeal and value to your investment. Call today or visit them at their website and see how they can make your outdoor spaces special. Southwest Specialties, creative, distinctive, beautiful. Thanks for watching Nevada Newsmakers. You can catch us online 24 hours a day at nevadanewsmakers.com or you can download the podcast wherever you like to get your podcast. We'll see you on the next broadcast.